Okay, so um, now let's discuss the second zodiac group in the season of serving the king. Gemini, the twins, Messiah, Jesus, will be a ruling servant, a foot-washing king who is both God, almighty, and also a suffering servant. Gemini, the twins, have two major stars, Pollux ruling and Castor suffering, significant enough for them to mention the name of the ship. Now, throughout the Bible is this theme of opposing characters. We, who are kings and priests, need to be humbled in order to walk such a walk as our Lord walked. Anything that you see that is made was made by His Word. In the beginning, in the very beginning when there was nothing, the Word spoke. God began to create through the Word that was with God and that was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Not as a king, as many thought the coming Mashiach would be, he came lowly in heart, almost obscure. His lineage was of the king through the line of David. He came lowly riding on a donkey. The king came lowly riding on a donkey. Okay? He fulfilled that prophecy when he did that. Uh, there, there, are four, there are four signs altogether. There is a wolf and there's a lesser wolf. Major star in the wolf is named Sirius, which has the connotation of being prince. It's the Hebrew word for shar, shar or sur is in there. Um, and then there's the lesser wolf. The lesser wolf represents the suffering. The Again, you have this one that is great and one that is not great. The, the fourth sign is a hare or it's sometimes called le lepus, not lupus, lepus. And uh, the Hebrew name for that is Arnabeth, and Arnabeth does mean hair. And Arnabeth is used in, in the Bible, Leviticus 11, 6, and it's part of the definition of what is a clean animal and what is not a clean animal. To be a clean animal, you had to both chew the cud and divide the hoof. Now it says, and the hare, because he chews the cud, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. When I think of chewing the cud, I think of uh, meditating on the law. You know, when the psalmist says, in thy law do I meditate. Now the other part, this divided hoof, um, being able to humble yourself and let the Lord exalt you in due time. You're dividing yourself. You are king, yes. You are royal priest, yes. But you divide yourself and you humble yourself and you serve as Jesus did because he emptied himself and he served. And some examples are uh, Matthew 19, 27 through 30. Those who forsake this world and its possessions shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Now, 18.4, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. In 23.11, But he that is greatest amongst you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Okay? Then in John 13, If I then, Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye ought also to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example 
that you should do as I have done. So you see that um, he did it as an example, and we are Christians like him, and we are to do the same kind of things. We are to um, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and God will exalt us in due time. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. That's James 1. Nine, time and time again. It's kind of clear in Isaiah 57, 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him, all, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. The high and lofty one in heaven is living also with a humble and contrite one who is going to revive the heart of the contrite ones that are, that are humble. So that's that one. And then you have Isaiah 53, 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. He bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Uh, Mark mentions that as a fulfillment of prophecy, that he was numbered with the transgressors, and he gave himself he bare the sin of many. There it is. He bare the sin of many. He was a suffering servant, and he made intercession for these transgressors. He's our lawyer, okay, pleading our case. We are guilty. He's pleading our case. He is that high priest. We're okay if we're in him, and we're with him, and we believe in him, and we trust that he's going to do it. We're fine. Okay, now, um, did you notice also there, um, he says, I will divide him a portion with the great. He's dividing with the great and dividing with the spoil because he pours out his soul unto death, and that's another part of it. He's dividing himself, okay? He's humbling himself. He's pouring out his soul un unto death. So that's the picture is he's full of life and he's coming to earth still full of life but yet he's now really pouring it out so that he's even pouring the life out of himself okay he is totally humbling suffering working serving doing what is necessary for our lives not for his life. He's doing it for our lives. He is serving us. He is washing us. He is washing us from the head to the toes. Clean every which way. Including our feet. For he is washing our feet. He has humbled himself. And he has shown us what we are ought to be like ourselves. For again, those that are high and lofty shall get humbled, and those that are humbled shall get high and lofty. And that's the way it works. He that is greatest among you shall be servant of all, serving others like he served others. Now let's go again, again with that divide, the cleft. The, the, the hair doesn't have the um, cleft foot, okay? He doesn't divide the foot. He hasn't got that part of the character. He chews the cut. He thinks about the law when it comes down to serving and humbling himself and working and being in that lesser mode, not doing works before men, but doing them before God where nobody really sees, but God sees knowing you will be rewarded 
many fold in the kingdom of God, knowing that. You're not doing it for the purpose of letting others see. Okay, let's go to um, Jacob's blessing to Benjamin. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Now again, the wolf is in the sign. There's a greater wolf and the lesser wolf. There's two constellation signs, a, le a great wolf and a lesser wolf. All right. So there is a direct connection to Benjamin. And Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour prey. So in the morning he is he's the master eating the meal. And then at night he has to divide the spoil. Okay, he has to go out and hunt. He has to go out and divide the prey. I'm sorry to say this, but he has to scatter the sheep. Now... Let's go take another close look, closer look at the at the hair, uh, because uh, there is a major star in the hair that is called uh, Nabal. Now Nabal is directly relates to a character in the Bible called Nabal, and his name means uh, foolishness and also wickedness. He uh, was. Somebody in prominence, he was high and lofty, he, had, he was of great stature, he had plenty of wealth, he was noted to be wealthy, and um, he did not divide of himself and give out of his wealth to David, who was a man of God, who was protecting him, who was somebody really on his side, and who had done him a service, and he didn't even want to acknowledge that. He was as a proud man who turned away David, who was really a man of God. So his name means foolishness, and he is of this type that does not divide himself. Now his wife, Abigail, was just the opposite. Okay, she was of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. This Nabal had a was gifted with a beautiful wife, not only beautiful but also intelligent and understanding. Because she was the one who did understand that it was foolish not to provide. David with a reward and, and helping David because he was on the side of the Lord. He was fighting the Lord's battles and at the same time he was protecting Nabal's shepherds. He did a service and David wanted, wanted some, something back from the guy who has got plenty of money. The guy has plenty. He did something. His, his men are working. He has to pay his men. How is he going to pay his men? Well, this is how. And it didn't work that way, according to Nabal. But Abigail saw that it was wrong for Nabal to not to pay him. She turned the whole thing around. David, in his wrath, was going to come, and he was going to wipe Nabal out, which, which really was not a good thing. As Abigail explains to David, that's not a good thing. When you're king, you know, you're going to have this mark on your head that you did this. Well, I mean, why? Let vengeance belong to God. And in the meantime, she humbles herself. She bows herself to the ground. She gives up this of her substance. Okay? She does what her husband should have done. She was not of his character. She divided herself. Nabal... He has a feast like he's a king. And then when the wine is out of him and somebody can talk to him normal, Abigail tells Nabal what happened and his heart turns to stone and he dies 10 days later. So just as Ab Abigail said, let God do it, God did it. And guess what happens? Abigail becomes David's wife and she becomes queen of all Israel. When she, when she finds out that she's um, going to be David's wife, she arises and she bows herself on her face to the earth 
and said, Behold, let thine handmaid, again, there's that servanthood of her, be a servant. She's saying, I want to be a servant to, to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. So there it is. She is doing exactly like the foot-washing king. So now, Benjamin has two names. The name Benjamin means son of my right arm, but his mother passed away at his birth. And his mother was in a sorrow state when he was born. She named him son of my sorrow. Two names, sorrowful and suffering, and the other one has to do with ruling and being exalted. What is the gemstone? The onyx stone alongside the jasper and the beryl. Okay? The jasper is a Joseph stone and the beryl is Levi's stone. When they were in the wilderness on the west side you had Ephraim and Manasseh and Benjamin. Okay? Ephraim and Manasseh are the sons of Joseph. So Joseph is the jasper. Levi was serving in the tabernacle, and there's also the sard onyx for the foundation stone of New Jerusalem. By the way, the word onyx just comes from the Greek uh, meaning of fingernail. Now, if you look at your fingernail, it has two colors on it. It's got the white and it's got the red, like, like the name sard onyx, which is the red and white onyx. Uh, now, an onyx stone, again, you carve into it, it's dramatically consists of two different colors, as in the two totally opposite characters of our Lord, who is our servant. Now, what about the gate in the city of David? The gate for Benjamin had two names. One was a valley gate, which was a low, and then it also was the high gate, because it, because it was in the valley, and it had, had to be high to meet the walls on the either side. So the walls were high, the gate was in the valley, so the gate itself had to be a high gate. What apostle do we relate to Benjamin? That would be Thomas, who had another name, Didymus. And the funny thing is, Thomas and Didymus both mean twins. To conclude, let's uh, take a look at uh, Paul, the apostle, who was of the tribe of Benjamin, who had two names. He was born with the name Saul, named after a king, also of the tribe of Benjamin, a man of stature, a head taller than all of the rest of the men. And the name Saul means desired one, the first king of Israel. And his kingship was taken away. And it was given to a much smaller man, David. Okay? So King Saul was abased and humbled David was exalted. Saul the apostle, when he was chief of sinners, was given another name by the Lord when he became a Christian. Jesus renamed him Paul, which means little. Paul had two names, one after a king, and the other one from a king who called him little. The life of Paul portrayed this this dual character attribute of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, let's take a look at his suffering side first. And he's talking, to, he's talking about his critics now. And he says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequent. In deaths, often. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, 
a night and a day I have been in the, in the deep, journeyings often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my countrymen, perils by the heathen, in perils by the city, perils by the wilderness, perils by the sea, perils by false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, fastings often, cold, nakedness, he goes on and on, but you could see that this man indeed portrayed the suffering side of a Christian's life. Okay, but he also had another side. He says in, in the, the, the next chapter, And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knows, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter unless I be and the end lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above me measure you see so he's explaining here that he had such an experience that he had to get this thorn in the flesh. Otherwise, he would have been exalted. Do you see the word exalted? Above measure. So this one who suffered was exalted. And that, that's only beginning. That's just a glimpse of the exaltation that such a man in God is going to receive. Now, we don't have to suffer as much as he did to share a similar reward in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.